Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It's lovely to have you here for yet another room makeover. This time it is my dining nook, which is the other end of the kitchen. So it's all the same room, but there's kind of a sectioned out space that's probably one of my favorite bits of the house, just in terms of the higher ceilings and the skylights. There's a lot of light, which is really nice, but I wanted to caveat this video before I start with a little disclaimer because I realized that all of my room makers so far have been renter friendly, or at least that's what I've been aiming for, obviously, because we are renting. But this one, or at least the wall treatment that I've done is not renter friendly. And believe me, guys, believe me, I tried. <laughs> I tried so hard, it literally nearly pushed me over the edge, but I just couldn't make it work as a renter friendly option. And by the point that I was literally losing my mind, I was just like, do you know what? I've come this far, I've got all the stuff, I'm just gonna do it anyway. So I fully realize and take ownership that we are going to have to put a bit of time and effort into stripping this off when we need to leave our tenancy. And that really is not ideal, but do you know what? It can still be done. It is fine. Um, it will just take more effort than just sort of peeling something off. So while there's definitely inspiration that renters can draw from this room makeover, the actual beadboard effect that I did on the walls is primarily aimed at people who already own homes because it is still a really good hack to make that whole effect so much more straightforward. I would say cheaper and you don't need any power tools and you don't need to be a wizard DIY at all. So it's still a really, really good hack if you do own your own place. And if you are renting and you would quite like to add some time onto the end of your tenancy, clearing everything up, then, you know, give it a go too. <laughs> The whole look and feel of this room flowed from a particular item that I got very kindly gifted to me from Heels. And that was the dining table and bench, which is beautiful and so, so well made. It was handmade to order. So it was a long wait for it to arrive. But once I decided on that, I kind of had everything else in the room flow from that kind of vibe and aesthetic and, I love how it looks now that it's finished. So I'm gonna show you what the room looked like before and then you can follow along with the whole transformation. Here's the space and it's basically a bit of a blank canvas, a bit bland right now, but with lots of potential. It's got lots of light coming in, particularly from those skylights up there and the slanted roof just adds a bit of character to it and also increases the ceiling height. There were a few things that we did straight away after moving into this space, just to lay a bit of a foundation for what was to come and soften the space. Um, and also wanted to make a bit of a feature with that light. My plan is to do a beadboard effect in this room. And so I was thinking, what color should I paint it? And I was going between these two. Basically, cold brew is coming out a lot grayer in this shot, but it's actually more taupe. But I think I have settled for the darker green color brewer, which I love. Oh, hey, just uh, hanging out by the bin here because I'm actually on the floor as I'm going to do the next project for the dining room. And that is these dining room chairs, which I've literally had for a long time since we, before we probably moved in. So like beginning of August, I got them on Facebook marketplace for, for 35 pounds. I mean, that is a bargain, right? And then this lovely bistro style, which is what I was looking for but they have a kind of orangey yellow varnish on them, which is not to my taste and does not match the lovely wood of the bench and dining table. The plan is to get that varnish off, get it back to the natural wood. And at first I thought I would do that by sanding and then I thought, actually, maybe I'll try and strip off the varnish. I don't know what I'm doing. I've, I've done a lot of research online, but I've never done this before, so. And then I'm gonna see how it looks au naturel. And 
if it does go with the existing dining furniture then great or if not I'll stain it a different color so this is what I'm using which kind of sounds a bit too good to be true to be honest but it had lots of recommendations and it is um not toxic and has no fumes doesn't need ventilation it's water-based and it's meant to just be painted on and then left i think overnight i mean clearly i will read this properly before i do it and then it is meant to be magical so we will see we will see if that works because if it does then happy days sounds easy So I actually did two rounds of what you just saw and whilst there is still a little bit of yellowness left in there compared to the table, I actually don't mind it at all and it's so much better. So I did a lot of researching. I was like, surely there is a removable wallpaper that is like a big board effect. I was convinced that that must exist. But believe me, I have looked long and hard and it's not to say that now when you're watching this video that it doesn't exist, but at this time I searched high and low online and I couldn't find anything. If it exists, it's not marketed very well um, because it was untraceable. So <laughs> I found lots of other lovely removable wallpapers, but none in this style that I wanted. I did come across on my travels around the internet, um, just normal be board wallpaper that was um, paintable. I checked that it was textured as well because obviously that would defeat the point. <laughs> and I found, yes, that it was indeed 3D, if that makes sense. And this very specifically said that it was paintable. And so I bought a lot of this. I don't know if you can see very well. So you can kind of see there, I ordered a bunch of that. Um, but then I was like, okay, so how then are we going to attach it to the walls in a removable way? Once again, did lots of researching and I did find a tutorial on a blog that was using liquid starch to kind of use as a paste, but then it was easily peelable when you were finished with it. And I was like, I mean, that sounds pretty good but the liquid starch that was being used and had been suggested in a couple of other places was one that you can only get in the States. Being in the UK, I tried to look for alternatives. I just wasn't sure that they were quite the same and I was worried it wasn't quite the right formula or, or whatever. So I just thought maybe it would be safer to go for the more widely used approach, which is to use painter's tape got my frog tape here because I had a lot of recommendations on specifically using frog tape so we will see and I tried to get one that was as wide as I could find so I've got that and I'm going to create a grid on the wall that then can peel off once I'm done but on top of that to attach the wallpaper I've got double-sided tape I saw that somebody used like no more nails but then more people seem to use double-sided tape and I thought, you know what, that seems a lot cleaner. I'm gonna try this, guys, to see if it works. We could fall at the first hurdle and not even get to painting it, <laughs> but I'm gonna have a go. And uh, around the top of the fake beadboard, I, I got this actually a while ago, like before we moved into this house. And it's like foam. <laughs> I mean, it's not foam. I don't know, it's just, it's kind of squishy. It's like a flexible border. So that's what I'm gonna try and do today. Okay, so this is how far I've got so far. I have done all around the top section. So that's where the beadboard is gonna come up to. And then down all of the sides along the bottom, 
this is a corner that I'm gonna have to somehow do. So I've put tape on either end of that. And then I've also done the plug sockets around the windows, underneath the windowsill. And uh, yeah, where I have, there are two plug sockets, which obviously I can't, <laughs> can't go over them. Um, but I've also cut some little corners here just because it's a curved edge rather than a straight edge. So I'm gonna tr try and work out getting a curved edge with the paper as well. I'm gonna start now measuring, um, I think it's 52 centimeters. Um, panels across to do lines going straight down because that is how wide my wallpaper is and I need to make sure that I have masking or painter's tape where there's going to be joins so that I can put the double-sided tape and it joins nicely and is stuck down <laughs> in those places because they're pretty key. Well, friends, you live and you learn the hard way. <laughs> so basically, I'm going to have to redo this section and this section because as you can see, it's kind of all air bubbled because I didn't listen to the advice on the stuff that I read about doing this technique. And then this panel is like done properly and obviously you can see the difference. But yes, I was reading that I should <clears throat> attach the paper from the top and work my way down to get it all even and not have air bubbles in it, which of course makes sense to me. But <laughs> in order to like line these edges up and also doing this bit in here to start with, it just made it so much easier to just go right down that seam straight away and then work across. So <laughs> seemed easier, but then ended up with this effect, so. Guys, I have to tell you, in all honesty, this is a very clever renter-friendly hack, but the reality of doing it is it's very hard to execute. I think all of the blogs that I saw that had done this sort of thing made it look really easy, and it's not, at least not to do it well, because of the um, double-sided tape. So obviously it goes on and it's kind of got to be right first time because there's no movement. Whereas obviously if you have wallpaper paste, but that's not an option in this case, but maybe if I tried the liquid cellulose, is that what it was? Liquid starch, then that probably would have had the same effect. So I would have been able to move it a little bit, get air bubbles out a bit more easily, maybe like line it up a bit better just kind of like accommodate for any mistakes. Whereas this is like, you gotta get it first time, <laughs> otherwise it does not look good. I think 
I think actually even trying the mask and tape but with the no more nails idea would have maybe also given it a bit of um, movability which would have helped so yeah just wanted to put it out there just to be honest unlike the vinyl that we used in the kitchen which is a very clever hack but also very simple to do I mean it can be time consuming but it's simple this I would say is quite hard <laughs> I did like almost lose my mind last night when I had to redo another section. So yeah, but I have started, so I'm going to persevere. <laughs> back again to tell you that once again things are not going to plan but anyway I wanted to show you the whole process because like I've been saying I want to be honest and also I feel like too often on YouTube or Instagram just social media in general it can look just straightforward all of the time like boom 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 I've done this cool thing and I have to say, most things that I try do work out first time. And, and even if it's going a little bit like wrong, I can sort of remedy it and like bring it back in and it all works out fine. But this is not one of those times. <laughs> so as you can see behind me, so I was saying last time that it's, it's hard to get it to sit flat on the wall. But this admittedly, I will show you more closely in a second. This admittedly is like the first panel that I did when I realized that and you can tell it looks, <laughs> it looks bad. Um, but I was leaving that just until I'd done some of the other ones and then I was gonna go back, peel that off and do it again. So this is like the worst of the worst, but I've still found it really hard to get it flush with the wall. It's definitely better. And I kind of worked out that I needed to at least put more bits of masking tape on for the double-sided tape to go on. So I've made much smaller grids. They're all closer together. So there's less of the wall where it isn't stuck. And it has helped, but still, it's, it feels a little bit hit and miss. And my worry, is that when I paint it, it's gonna warp more and it will be even more obvious. And part of me was like, maybe I should just try doing a bit, maybe on like one of the bits that I've got wrong and see, paint it. But to be honest, the more I've looked at it, I've had a break for a few days from it. The more I've looked at it, the more I'm just like, should I just quit now? and like just peel it all off and go back to the start and I think that is what I'm gonna do <laughs> even though I have given more time to this than I would like to admit to this week but yeah I'm just I'm just not happy and I don't think that I'm going to be so I'm gonna go back to scratch so my very first idea which was, I mean, it wasn't my idea. I'd done like some research online and I'd seen people using liquid starch. Another worry was just that most of the tutorials I'd seen were for putting fabric on your walls as wallpaper using the liquid starch. But since then, and I've like very specifically typed this in, um, I have found more people that have used it for wallpaper. So it does seem to work. I just wanna say that I have read lots of blogs and seen YouTube videos where this um, grid effect did work for them. So I don't want to make out like it wouldn't work for you. I just think maybe the only explanation that I can possibly think of is that this is a textured wallpaper and maybe it only really works if it's just like a flat 2D wallpaper. I don't know if like the bits that are standing out in relief make it harder to smooth down and easier for air pockets to happen I don't know 
you are now going to witness me taking it all down again. <laughs> but actually, I guess this will be quite a good test to see how removable it really is. Like, does it do as advertised? Is it actually renter friendly? For anybody, for reference, if you were going to try it with flat wallpaper, let's see. Right guys, I tried a section last night just to test out the liquid starch that I got. And um, I'm not entirely sure what happened to me, <laughs> but I think I maybe put slightly more liquid starch down the bottom and it stuck really well down there. Um, and it stayed up all good and it looks so much better than what I was doing before. So I'm gonna roll ahead with it. Um, and I'm just gonna see if it, yeah. It removes really well. That's amazing. If this works, this is literally a dream come true. <laughs> okay, so what I've done is I've still masked along the top with painter's tape, just so, although that looks a little bit wobbly there, um, so I know kind of where a straight line is for lining up the wallpaper, um, but also the trim molding thing along the top i need something to attach that to and then i've done it along the bottom as well i've then added a thin line of masking tape so that i can just secure that last bit really really well um because obviously i know that masking tape does work really well sorry not masking tape double-sided tape <laughs> guys uh, i think that this diy is fully sending me insane anyway i basically today because kids are both out of the house in nursery i was like right i'm gonna tackle this wall situation again i cut all of the strips of wallpaper to the right size just so i had them all ready to go and then I kind of re-looked at this tutorial that I'd um, looked at before and um, just followed what it said to do on there. Except it said to paste the wall <laughs> with the liquid starch, which is what I did. But seriously, guys, it was just peeling off. Like, it wouldn't stick. Like, I, just, I literally didn't understand what was going on. And I tried it on one strip, didn't work. Tried it on another strip. I was like, oh my word, this is literally my absolute nemesis. Like, what is wrong with me? Why does nothing work for me? And I was like, I don't really want to give up using this beadboard wallpaper, especially because I bought it all, but like, also I, I want it. <laughs> and so I was looking up um, from b &Q where I got it and seeing, you know, they often do like, oh, this item is matched with this item. And I was looking for the paste that they were suggesting. I was like, do I just, do I just do it like normal wallpaper? And then I saw the paste method was paste to paper. And then I remembered when I did my sample, I did paste it on the paper. I didn't paste it on the wall and that's how it worked. So I was like, oh, is that the problem? And I just did a little tester up here. and uh it sticks <laughs> it sticks people hey from me and my bewildered face once more am i going insane possibly did the liquid starch work no of course it did not work because none of these tricks seemed to work for me <laughs> and i was ready to just bash my head against a wall because seriously i have spent so long on this trying to find a way to make this wallpaper this beadboard situation renter friendly and it just 
hasn't worked. So I just decided I would accept it's not going to be renter friendly. I tried. I really tried. I really went all in and committed and I can't do it. So I decided to order the wallpaper paste that is just meant to go with this wallpaper just standard wallpaper paste and accept that it's not renter friendly and we will we will work out the consequences when we need to leave this house we'll work out how to get it off and maybe the landlord might even prefer it and we won't have to remove it who knows so yes i i ordered that i started last night and did a fair amount of the wall already actually and you know what when you use what the manufacturers intend you to use with the product you bought it, it works really well <laughs> Right team, I have gone around the top of the wallpaper and I basically put, it's quite hard to see, but um, I put some masking tape, not masking tape, painter's tape, and then some double sided over the top. So I'm basically doing the same trick as before, but um, this bit is what's gonna go on there. So that's how I'm gonna stick it on. And the bit that overlaps with the wall, that will mean that that doesn't kind of leave a mark or whatever. Not that it matters at this stage, to be honest, because there's wallpaper on the walls. But yeah, that's what I'm going to get on with. Now I'm going to try and attach this and then I can prime this thing because I'm not I'm not sure that I could just paint straight onto it. Whereas this is paintable wallpaper, so I will be able to paint straight onto that in theory. Let's hope it works. So it is roughly straight. <laughs> it's not completely straight, but I tried my best to follow the tape edge, which I did use a spirit level to put on. Obviously I need to paint this bit where some of the paintwork came off, but I'm just going around and removing all the little pencil markers that I made at the beginning. And then also when I went to this corner, I did just continue going round, but I just scored in there so it looks like it's been joined with wood you know and it takes some of the tension off um here because this is rubbery it starts to kind of um crease so i think that that actually looks kind of convincing I'm jumping back on because I have been meaning to do a sealer top coat on the painted wallpaper beadboard stuff. I think I would feel better just if there was something coating it and, and finishing it off. So I'm going to do a matte sealer and just see if that gives it a little bit more longevity. I was very scared of ruining it. So I've literally just done a little bit, which is good because you can't really even see. I mean, I don't really know what I was expecting, but um, I just dried it with the hair dryer very quickly so that I could see how it dries.
So guys, that was the room makeover. I hope you're inspired by the textured wallpaper and bendy molding that I discovered. When I found those online, I was just like, this is genius. <laughs> it just makes doing a beadboard wall so much more accessible. And actually, once I did it how I was meant to do it, it was very straightforward to do the wallpapering. I've never actually applied proper wallpaper before, so yeah. And it's great that it's paintable because then you can kind of customize it to however you want your room to be. I have to say, I'm quite proud of myself that I did a bold color. Like I just have never gone for bold colors in my house. I don't think ever, I definitely haven't painted anything a dark striking color. So yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I feel like the room can handle it because everything else is quite neutral and the opposite end with the kitchen, everything's very neutral and bright. And also this space does get a lot of light, as I said, with the skylights and the fact it has two other windows. So I feel like it could afford having a darker color and also it kind of feels a little bit less risky when it's only going halfway up the wall. So, so thank you very much to Coat who kindly gifted me the paint to do that. It's beautiful paint, really, really great and also eco-friendly. So what more could you want? I do have to add that maybe three weeks after I finished this room makeover, I actually saw Drew on Lone Fox do a video using the beadboard textured wallpaper and he did find a rental friendly way to do it. And I was like, oh, okay. If only I had seen this content before I was trying every other rental friendly hack that I could think of. And basically he was gonna attempt to do the painter's tape with double-sided tape over the top, but he, unlike all of the other tutorials that I've seen, which also made sense, did painter's tape all the way across the wall. So like all of it was covered with, with painter's tape. And then he was gonna buy double-sided tape to cover all of that, which to be honest, would be a heck of a job. <laughs> Even doing what I did was very time consuming. And yeah, for you to get every bit covered is very hard but also you would still have the same problem of once it's stuck, there's no moving it. So like you have to get it right first time. But then realizing that he didn't have that much double-sided tape available to him and that it was gonna cost loads of money to get that much double-sided tape, he actually just decided to paste straight onto the painter's tape. And it seemed to work because genuinely at one point I considered vinyling the wall with peel and stick vinyl and then trying to paste on top but i just didn't think that the paste would soak into vinyl when it's not um i think porous is the word that i'm looking for anyway i just thought it would slide off and it wouldn't stick but he seemed to find that painter's tape did work so if you are wanting to try this in a renter friendly way i will link that video down below because it seemed to work for him and he tried a bit at the edge and it seemed to peel away. So I can't guarantee 100% that it's exactly the same because obviously he's in the States and I'm in the UK. I mean, it was available in lots of different places, so it may well be the same and work the same and require the same paste. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just gonna like caveat that. But if you wanna try it, it seemed to work for him, so there is a different option if you are a renter. An option that I wish that I had known about before I was going insane. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being part of this journey to redo my whole home. And please do consider subscribing. It would be lovely to have you following along here and yeah, hopefully getting some inspiration of your own as we go. As I said before, I am really enjoying producing videos. It's something quite different for me and it's just really satisfying, even though it is a really time consuming process, I am really enjoying it. So I will see you in my next video, which I don't think will be another room makeover just yet because I need to kind of catch up a little bit. Um, it will be something else for you, but there are still rooms that need to be done so they will be coming your way soon bye guys